latest episode of the Rob Harker the interviews exclusively on Out News Global TV it's lovely to see you back now my next guest this is true is a Eurovision winner and I think it's fair to say that she is something what do you mean something she is most definitely an icon across the Irish Sea she has appeared on the recording on one of the most successful movie soundtracks ever. She hosts an incredibly incredible podcast and she's headlining at an LGBTQ plus festival in County Clare. So let's just cut straight to it and give a massive Out News Global welcome to the one and only Neve Kavanagh. Hello Neve. <laughs> Me, that's me, Robert. I, I was impressed with myself listening to that introduction. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's all downhill. It's all downhill from here, Neve. Uh, so uh, where do we find you today? Well, today I'm at home. Uh, I'm literally not long in from walking the dog, as usual. Most people are used to, if they hear me being interviewed, it's quite often I'm coming in from whatever walk I've done. Yeah. And um, yeah, I've, I'm just at home. I'm kind of deciding whether I'm going to paint my garage or not. So that's it. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. So, so Lee, you, you, there, there's so much to cover and we I know we don't have that much time, but my the audience would not forgive me if I didn't start with Eurovision and you won the thing back in 1993 so looking at how well preserved you were you must have been about nine um <laughs> now you're in a very very exclusive club there have only been 67 Eurovision winners that's yeah that's less fewer people than have won Wimbledon won the World Cup it, it's a pretty <laughs> exclusive club <laughs> can you describe, if you can cast your mind back all those years, are you able to describe the moment that you knew you were you you'd won, where your your scores couldn't be surpassed by the second place, which I think was actually the UK? Was it a moment of euphoria? Well, to be fair, euphoria is a whole other winner, so uh, we'll just leave that there. <laughs> uh, no, actually. Funny enough, there's a couple of things I want to say. First of all, first of all, to be fair, there's seven Irish winners, right? So there's yeah. like eight of us in that club. So it's not as exclusive for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually, to be fair, you uh, started it was a already, fantastic folks. experience. What? You've started already. <laughs> yeah, I know. Cheeky, cheeky. Uh, you know what? Actually, um, I, I had such a fantastic time in 93 and it was such an unexpected win. And let's be honest. At the very last moment, that's the only time I knew I'd won because it was yeah. literally down to the very last vote. So exciting for everybody watching, less fun for us as people participating, shall we say, but all good. I have to say it was a brilliant, brilliant experience. And, it, you know, 20, was it 28 years now since, uh, yeah. since I won? Yeah. You know, to be honest with you, I still get a buzz out of it. A couple of years, am I right? Before you did Eurovision, mm -hmm. you sang on the soundtrack album for The Commitments, which is just yeah. a most wonderful album. And, it, and I think it's the best selling or one of the most, one of the best selling movie soundtrack albums in Ireland, which is extraordinary when you think of, you know, it's up against West Side Story and The Sound of Music and some real yeah. Hollywood classics. But when you got that job, um, was it just another kind of session job or did you know that it was something special? <laughs> well, I had auditioned to be in it, to be fair. Yeah. Um, and myself and Maria Doyle were the last two for the part. Like there was five people for three parts at the end in the last audition. Um, I was completely shocked every time I went into the next stage. I wasn't really expecting to get it. When he asked me to do the soundtrack, I did think it was like another session. And I don't think any of us knew how big that movie was going to be. Yeah. Um, and the, the movie aside, actually, 
the soundtrack album still sells hugely today. And I still get a lot of reaction to that when I say, you know, obviously sometimes come to me because of your vision or whatever else I'm doing at the time. And then they kind of go, you sang in the commitments. And I say, yes, I did that. And, and, and whose voice were you? And then I say, no, it wasn't anybody's voice. Just at the beginning of the movie, I sang the first three kind of songs before people started actually singing in the movie. They all know how to sing. They all knew how to do their own thing. So really I sang destination anywhere, nowhere to run and do right woman, do right man. And basically I took the session fee and went to EOS for two weeks with my mates and had the crack, but I still get royalties now. So, I mean, they gave me an eighth of a percent. Well, you might, you might get a little bit from me because I'm I'm just, I'm going to stream it when I walk the dog after this, but I think you're Marvelous. One person's <laughs> royalty from streaming. Excellent. It's not going to be great, but you know, it could buy you half a newspaper or something. Yes, yeah, no, well, something like that. <laughs> so you, you do so much, it's difficult to know where to go next, but <laughs> I know that there's been a lot of buzz around a podcast called Agony Rants. Yeah. So the floor is yours, Neve. Tell us about Sell it. it. You want me to sell yeah. it to you. Come on. Okay, well, see, Agony Rants is basically myself and uh, this guy, Garode Farley, who's a fantastic comedian, right? He's a stand up comedian here. And he lived around the corner from me when I won Eurovision back in the day. He was 14 years of age when I won it. And he <laughs> and I became friends over the years after he got over stalking. You know, he used to stalk me originally and then he became friends with me. And so we decided we'd like to do something together. So Agony Rants basically is us having conversations and listening to people's stories based on different topics. He is your gay best friend. I am your mommy. And basically that's the way we work and we give advice. We give our own stories based on what happens. Actually, what actually happens is we mostly spend our time laughing our heads off because we're trying to surprise each other with the stories we tell. But it is really fun and we're getting a great reaction to it, which is really fun. It's really for us to have fun, but um, we're getting very good reaction to it. And is it is it sort of a, is it ironic or are you really giving advice if you don't mind? Well, we try to give advice, but I'll be honest with you, you're more likely to hear from Garo that he's going to put a wheelie bin through somebody's door. You know, yeah. he's very extreme compared to me, and um, it's not. We're not looking to make you know solve people's problems. We're literally just looking to share it. You know, the way you would chat to your mates and go isn't this desperate this is happening like or can you believe that happened and and to make each other laugh about it and so really agony rants is not necessarily a solving problem but if we got to the point that we could actually add something in it's really just a sharing platform but okay. also for us to tell our stories too <laughs> oh, fantastic and that's going to be available on all the usual podcast providers so yes you can get it on all of your head stuff produce it and so basically we go in we record we have the lulls and then we put it out on any platform that you get your podcast on you'll find us you, you it's hard to miss basically uh, it's it's kind of nice and blue it's a sunny kind of thing but it's literally called agony rants yeah. now when i decided we would call it that uh, we based it on agony ants as such you know but i realize there's a whole generation of people who don't know who they are <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. i know I don't, what, what, what used to be agony ants i was thinking yeah. about the other day i mean I, i'm sure it was the same in ireland that it was that it was here in the uk but up yeah. until a certain point it was sort of i suppose a very sort of comfortable middle-aged yeah. women who were completely unqualified psychologically but had just kind of worked a book in, in the case of the uk on fleet street yeah. and just kind of got the gig to give yeah, I know. Well, and actually Myself and Garode are completely unqualified also, so that's perfectly... But we yeah, but people perfectly do that. We're people not do. trying to solve the world, lads, oh, but yeah. we love your stories and we are having the best time with it. And actually, I'm just loving people's reaction to it because what they're doing is they feel like they're sitting at the table with us while we're chatting. And uh, we and sometimes we make each other laugh so much we can't actually breathe, but we do try to edit some of that out because you don't want to listen to us laughing for half an hour. But we yeah, do I, have a really fun doing it. And it's it's very naturally the way we would have our lunch, basically. <laughs> normally I do extensive research for these uh for these interviews, but you'll forgive me. As, as you know, we only we were on a very tight show schedule and we only set this yes. up this morning so I haven't listened to it but I promise you I will so I need to make a list my 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 Neve Kavanagh list commitment <laughs> album best of Eurovision agony <laughs> that's my, my dog's gonna get a very long walk but yes, char- a very very long walk <laughs> I'm gonna charge my phone now 
The real reason you're with us today is for the third time in nine years, mm -hmm. you'll be appearing at the Outing Festival, which is happening just before Valentine's Day next, next year, weekend 11th to the 13th of February in County Clare. Now, right. you're obviously an old lag, and when I say old, I mean long established <laughs> and experienced at the event. So, can you tell the UK uh, audience a little bit about the Outing Festival and actually a little bit about the setting, County Clare? Because you know what we're like over here. If it's not mm -hmm. Dublin or Galway, we don't really know it. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I get that. I get that. Uh, yeah. Actually, funny enough, um, I first did my first Pride event in 2010, proper Pride event, shall we say, in 2010, just after Eurovision. And, and the thing that gets me is that it took them so long to come find me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but actually, uh, obviously, when I redid Eurovision, they just decided to come. And I met the wonderful Eddie McGuinness around that time. And yeah. he runs the outing. And the thing about it is, he said to me, I think one of the very early ones, he said to me, will you come and do the outing? And I said, where is it? He says, Liston Varna. And, uh, you know, I'm old enough to know that, that the matchmaking festival there was yeah. a very big deal when I was growing up. So I thought this was absolutely fantastic that they were running an, an LGBTQ one. And I was so excited about it. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to go, I'm going to do it. And I usually get all my sequins out for it, not necessarily on my dress, but definitely in my soul. So we get all the songs that we love to do. I do kind of Eurovision ones, like real classic, you know, boom, bang, a bang, put it on the string. And then I'll lash out an L proud Mary that will make you happy. And, you know, all those kind of things just really a fun night where we kind of share the experience of loving music and having the crack and the whole weekend honestly you'll be exhausted coming home but you'll be so enriched it's really about celebrating love finding love meeting new people with similar kind of things and just having the crack the way you would in ireland like you'd come and they'll have kayleys and they'll have matchmaking and quite a few people have met at them and i've been back now as i say this is the this is my third time to go back um and uh, really they are so so fantastic i absolutely love it i mean uh, RuPaul writer who's doing the actual um, blind date section, um, who's probably well known in the industry now, and he's doing some lots of stuff. I was first in Panto with him in 2010. That's when oh, I met no, him. And on, I was the evil queen. I loved it. <laughs> I work it well. But actually, what's that? If there's any evil queens in this interview. Oh, yeah. We love the evil queen situation. But actually, uh, so he's really progressed in those years. He was literally the choreographer at the time. And now he's like Mr. Fabulous himself. And he literally just got engaged, which is so exciting. So I'm so thrilled by being involved in the outing because I love everything that they do. It's really fun. I mean, you know, I've been married a long time, so I have to live vicariously through the excitement of other people meeting up. Um, so it's in uh, the grounds of Drumolan Castle, beautiful, beautiful place. They've moved out of Liston Bar and it got too big for it. So we were now at the inn in Drumolan Castle in Clare. It's really gorgeous around there now. It's well worth it. There'd be an old train or some such a thing to get you down there. There'd be no bother. If you look it up on Google, I'm sure you'll figure out how to get there. I'll tell you something. Um, I did go on Google just before this interview and, and right now we're doing return flights from various points in England and Scotland. Mm -hmm. Uh, obviously, it depends exactly when you travel, but it's like about 35 quid return. So, yeah, it's, I mean, it's like it's less than you pay for a train ticket in, in yeah. the UK, let's be honest, anywhere. No, so <laughs> these days, it's less than you pay for a round of, round of drinks. Yeah, I know, I know, well, certainly these days, anyway, if you can get one. Yeah, yeah, but actually, absolutely. do you know what? It's so exciting and it's really fun and life affirming experience. I love it, I absolutely love being involved in it. And they have they take it very seriously in some ways you know the matchmaking but really you're just meeting like-minded people who want to have fun it, if you're already matched up you can still come you know you never know maybe you know well, <laughs> but well, this this day and age anything goes doesn't it people yeah, you don't have to be single to enjoy it as a matter of fact then you can stand out as a beacon to other people who are maybe looking for ways yeah. of being coupled in but you just have such a great time yeah. and it's 
it's a wonderful celebration. It's a whole weekend of events. And, you know, sometimes I just drop in to do the gig and head out because I'm usually working a lot. But I'm ha- kind of hoping I'm going to get to stay over this time, although that might end in tragedy for all of us. Like, to be honest, the level of party might just level up. Well, I'm, try- I'm trying to get that. I'm trying to get there myself. If not, we will be sending someone. Uh, for yes, that. do. But I would certainly love, love to come over myself. Um, yeah. Incidentally, about 10 minutes ago at the start of that answer, you just came up with a brilliant line for the uh, for the title of your next album, Sequins My Soul. Come on. <laughs> Come on. That's an album title, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm definitely going to use that. Sequins <laughs> of My Soul exist. <laughs> Neve, it has been great talking to you and I could talk to you all day, but my favourite guests get a bit of a quick fire round. Um, oh, wow. Are you up for it? It's I'm just, up for it. It's just four questions, one or the other. So start nice and easy, beach holiday or city break? Oh, uh, city break usually, I have to say, I spend the summer on by the beach, but actually I absolutely love a city break. Yeah. Cheese or chocolate? Chocolate. Yeah, correct answer. <laughs> Netflix and chill or party till dawn? Oh, tough one. When I was, uh, party till dawn hasn't happened for quite a long time for me. Oh. Uh, Netflix and <laughs> chill, yeah, I'd be in for that. Yeah, and finally, this is where it gets really raunchy, soft and sensual or down and dirty? You're asking me to choose? I want all of that. <laughs> Got it. I, 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 I asked the questions. That is in my power. I'm giving you all of that. You can have that. I'm Do I have to choose? It. Can I not have it all? You have it all. It's winging its way across the Irish Sea as we speak to your door. Neve, that is all we've got time for. I, I honestly could chat with you all day, but I really want to thank you for taking the time to join us and to wish you in all your future endeavours much love, luck and happiness. Neve Kavanagh, thank you. Thank you, Robert. Love that. Thank you.